So in this video, we are going to discover the blocks related to the storage in the material handling library. So we can see here three blocks, the store, the retrieve, and the storage system. So I'm going to build a very simple model. So as always, we're going to start with the source. And then I'm going to use the store block. Now this block is used to simply store items in a storage space. So in order to be able to use this block, we will need to use from the space markup the storage. So let's try to discover what this storage element is. This element is simply an area that is divided into cells where each cell can contain one material or one object out of the material that we are going to store. Now there are many characteristics uh, related to this element. But uh, before uh, digging in into these characteristics, I will show you a small uh, uh, explanation in order for you to understand the terms that are used in any logic to describe this element. So this storage element can be made up of several racks. And each rack contains cells that store material objects. So each cell can contain one object. So what you see in this figure is one rack. And as you can see, each rack is divided to certain cells and each cell, as we said, is going to contain an object. Each rack is divided into certain elements. These elements are called the slots, the bays, and the shelves. I'm going to show you now what each term means. This part of the rack is called a slot. So the slot is a horizontal element that contains several cells next to each other. This is called a slot. So this hatched area is a slot. This is another slot. This uh, is another slot, etc. Next, this block, which is made up of several slots that are stacked over each other, is called the bay. And finally, this area uh, which is made up of slots that are next to each other is called the shelves. So now that you know what each term represents, we can easily uh, explore the options that you have to make up your storage area. So the first option is the rag type. The rag type means that uh, this is the method that the items are going to be stored in this area. So we are going to keep it as it is now and we will talk about it in a little bit. Now the second option, which is the rack placement, provides the choice of how to place these racks. These racks can be placed in pairs back to back, as you can see here. Uh, this means that the aisles that exist between the racks can give access to two racks. While the other option, which is the standalone, uh, means that the racks will be just set of one racks and the eyes between them will give access to only one rack. So the other options are pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the rack depth. We can change it, let's say, two. As you can see, this is the depth of the rack. I will just keep it uh, as one meter for now. Then we have the number of racks that the system is made up of. I will choose one, for example. So as you can see now, I have only one rack. Then I have the number of the bays. So as we said, these are the bays. So for now I have five, let's choose four, for example. And uh, this is the number of the cells per slot. So each slot will contain certain number of cells and each cell will contain one object. So I will choose five, for example. And I will change to drive in just so you can see how these cells are divided. So as you can see now, I have uh, five cells. So my system currently is currently composed of one rack uh, that has uh, four bays and each slot has uh, five cells. Now if we choose uh, three racks, for example, instead of one, we can modify the uh, uh, rack depth graphically like this, for example. We can also modify the depth of the aisle using this 
also graphically. So now the aisles are, na are narrower. Okay, as you can see. We can also choose to uh, specify the number of the racks and the number of bays uh, uh, to be calculated based on dimensions instead of defining them explicitly. So to do that, I'm going to choose these options. In this case, you need to provide the width of the aisles. Let's say the aisles are going to be equal to 2 meters. And you need also to specify the width of the bay. Uh, let's say it's equal to 1. And in this case, once you change the dimensions of the uh, uh, system graphically, the system, the number of the racks and the number of bays will directly be calculated based on the aisle width and the bay width that you entered. So if we do this, for example, the number of racks will directly be modified and if we do this, the number of bays will be modified. Now if we go down here to the position and size, here we can modify the width of the axis zone. The axis zone is this area. Uh, which is in front of the first track and this area is simply uh, the area that the transporters that will transport the items from certain location to the racks are going to use to access these racks. So now that we have explored the space markup a little bit, let's continue building our process. So the items that are going to pass through our process are the storage items or the material items that are going to be stored in the storage space. So I will add a material item type, I will call it box, so I will be storing sets of boxes and I will choose this, this shape for my box and finish. So now I will choose the box to be the agent that's going to pass through my process. Now let's move on to the store block. So this store block has to be associated or connected to a certain storage area. So I'm going to choose the storage area, which is the one I have here. Next, uh, this uh, block should also be connected to the transporters or the agents that are going to move the items from, the, from a certain location to the storage area. So these items or these agents can be uh, transporters, can be resources, or we, can, we have the option of uh, the items being moved independently. So uh, uh, no agent is going to transform them. They are going to just independently, independently put themselves in the storage area. So I'm going to choose uh, transporters for now. So I'm going to add a transporter fleet for that matter. Okay, I will choose free space. So this tra uh, transporter fleet is going to move in a free space. And I'm going to add a node that these, these transporters are, are going to be located in. So I will choose the home location to be this node. And I will just keep everything else the same. What we need to add now is a transporter type. So I will add a transporter type, I will call it uh, forklift. So forklifts are going to move the boxes from a certain location to the storage area. Okay, I'm going to keep this 3D. Okay, so if I go back to the transporter fleet, I will change my agent to forklift. Now I will just add a simple delay block so uh, the items or the boxes are going to be stored in the system for 10 minutes for example and then they will just leave the system. Okay and I will finish off with the sink. And I'm also going to specify the number of forklifts that we're going to have. So let's choose five. 
Now we will go back to the store block. So I'm going to specify the fleet that I added. So this fleet is the one that is going to uh, move the items to the storage area. The pickup location is going to be the agent, which are the boxes. And the slotting policy is the policy in which the boxes are going to be stored in the storage area. So I will choose random for now and we will talk about the other options after we run them. So this means that for now, the way that the boxes are going to be stored in the storage area or in the racks is just going to be random. So whichever cell that the transporter finds to be empty, the transporter will put a box in. So add another node because this node is going to be the location in which my boxes are going to be stored. Okay, so I will add another rectangular node here, for example. And in the source block, I will specify the location to be this node. And I will change the rate to, uh, let's say, 10 per minute. And I'm also going to add a 3D window to be able to see the shape of our rugs. And I will also rotate the direction of the rugs. And finally, we just still have to indicate for the uh, capacity of the delay to be maximum. And now I will run the model. Okay, so as you can see, this is our storage system, which is made up of three racks. And now our transporters are going, I'm going to speed things up. They are going to move the boxes from their initial location and store them inside the rack system. So as you can see, the boxes are just being uh, stored randomly inside any empty cell. But as we can see here, the box seems to be too small, so we need to modify this. So if you go to the box, if you remember in the material handling library, the actual dimensions that are being used for the box are the one here and not uh, the ones related to the animation. So in order to fix this issue, we need to, to modify the animation uh, so that it fits with the actual dimensions of the box here. So I will just increase the size of the box to be equal to the actual dimensions. So I will run the model again. So now as you can see the size of the boxes is already looking much better. However, as you can see, it seems that uh, the box seems to be flying. So we need to fix this in order for this box to uh, be positioned in its correct location with respect to the transporter. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the forklift and I'm going to use a function which is the set cargo position. So this function sets the position of the cargo with respect to the center of the transporter. So I want the position to be zero or the coordinates to be all zero with respect to the center of my transporter. So now let's run the model again. So as you can see now, the boxes are located correctly with respect to the transporters. Now the last thing I want to talk about in this video, if we notice, if you noticed here, when the transporters put the boxes inside the storage area, the shape and the color of the boxes changes. This is happening because of the following. So here, in the storage markup, we have chosen in the appearance section for the occupied cells animation to appear per color indication. So this means if you do not intend to make a 3D animation or an animation in general for your model, that you can choose 
this option and in this case you will know that the cell is occupied just by a, a color indication but in our case since we have an animation we will need to choose this option which is the agent animation and now if we run the model again so you will see now that when the transporters put the boxes inside the storage the actual shape and color of the box will appear at, as it is.